What's up my love bugs and love muffins? It's Mama Love and I am here with a video. And this video is different because this is something that I never did. But this video is all about me. And um, I thought maybe with all the misconceptions going on that I could um, tell you about me because everybody's assuming at this point. So I need to come forth. I'm not good at um, speaking up on a lot of things. As you can see in the past, I kind of like leave things, you know, to lay dormant, figuring it would work itself out or it would just pass on and go away. But this video is particularly about me and it's about how, you know, the ways I am like I am and how I was, you know, coming up. Well, first off, I am the second oldest child of three brothers. I'm the only female. I had my first baby when I was 25 years old. I wasn't gonna have any children. I wasn't gonna bring no kids in this world because uh, to me this world was a messed up world and I just felt like as I was coming up as a child, a lot of things was I felt like was undealt. The cards were dealt to me wasn't fair, you know? And I just didn't have a really good, you know, childhood and um, so I thought that, you know, if I brought kids into this world, I would just be doing a repeat of my life. But when I found out that I was pregnant, um, I was afraid. Um, everything seemed to, you know, change for me, like right then and there, because it was, okay, I'm a mother now, and I gotta make sure that this child don't go through the things that I've been through, you know, and how I felt as a kid coming up. I don't want this child to go through that. Um, so when I had my first child, um, I was in a relationship when I had her with her father. Her father was a beautiful man. He was beautiful, nicest person. Boy, to me, him is like, he was a real humble man. And, um, but, the only, like I said, difference between me and him, you know, was our religion. And that's the only reason why um, I wasn't with him, because of that. Because the religion was different. And I know that you can't mix the two, you know. And, um, but with my first baby, it, before it could be a tug of war, I kind of took her and got lost. And the reason why I did that is because, you know, with different beliefs and things like that, um, he wanted to take her and go to Yemen with her. And I just wasn't gonna have it. Not my first baby, not my, not my firstborn. You know, it's my first child. And um, I'm not gonna have it where, you know, she's not with me and I can't be with her and she's, raised in another country under another religion. I mean, it just, just couldn't be like that. Not with me, it wasn't. So to make a long story short, Queen was born. And when I had um, her, I was just me and her for six years, you know. Um, I struggled a lot um, coming up with her because it was like I was just really like starting out, you know, to get my own life together. Because when I left my parents' home, I was, 17. Well, the first time I left, I was 16. I had to come back because I wasn't of age and I could have gotten in trouble by the police. So um, I had to return back home and when hit 17, I left, you know. I, I really, it's, it's really hard and uncomfortable for me to make this video because it's like, I know how social media is. It's so judgmental on a lot of things and, you know, but I asked the Lord to word, word my mouth and help me, you know, and wording things and, you know, things to say and what things not to say. Cause like I said, it seems like I'm just on eggshells when it comes to my channel. I shouldn't feel like that, but I do, you know. And I can say this where Queen get a lot of her ways from on that end. That part is, um, I don't like confrontation. I don't, I don't like drama. I'm not a messy person. I'm not. Um, however, my mouth does get me in trouble. That's where Tina comes in. Tina's like me in that area. You know, my honesty gets me in trouble. Um, 
I've learned to tone that down a lot though um, because I could just speak something and um, you know a lot of people be mad but it would just be my honest opinion or you know just the fact of uh, getting someone told you know so that area you know my daughter but I, I'm not I'm not like a confrontational person and I'm not one to not have a filter I'll use it when I have to and that's how my son is like me Terrell was more laid back um, he doesn't have to say anything unless he has to he won't say anything unless he has to you know but Tina gonna go ahead and give it to you and Terrell and then Queen's gonna just walk away or not even speak on it or you know but like I said it was just me and Queen for six years I had moved into a, a two-bedroom townhome uh, most of you saw it on a documentary um, the white townhouses where we were at where you know she was raised up at and um, that was my very first place because of my places before that I was staying with cousins I was staying with friends um, you know these are all the places that I stayed before I you know left my mom and dad's house and you know how you is coming up you you know you a troubled teenager or whatever you going through some things and I was always told most of the time that the word was get out you know because when you in somebody else's house of course you got to go you know abide by their rules or whatever or maybe sometimes it just wasn't enough room for you or nothing like that so anyway I got me a job my first job was um 17 I had got my first job at 17 years old um that was a McDonald's job my second job was a Wendy's job my third job was a cleaning crew company um that I worked for with my friend and um, when I um, had my fourth job, I want to say it was a packaging company. And um, that's where I met, you know, Queen's father. And uh, we worked there together uh, for the longest. I had bought my first car there, working that job. We would get paid every week. And um, I didn't have a place yet. I was just, you know, like staying at my friends or, you know, here, there, whatever. And so when I met Queen's father, um, he didn't know that I didn't have a place to stay, you know. But he would always invite me over all the time, like, and he always wanted me to, you know, come over for tea or whatever. But I was just nervous about him because at first, you know, he a man. I, I, I mean, I didn't know him. You know, he was uh, another culture. This was my first time, like, talking to somebody outside, you know, my race or whatever. And it's just the things that, you know, you used to hear about Arab men and things like that. Or you have to watch them, you know what I'm saying? They real strong about their culture and his family or whatever may not like you because, you know, just the things that we... You know, I used to hear at, you know, at that age and that time, around that time, you know. And um, so I was afraid, you know, I was afraid to go around. But um, he made me feel comfortable, you know, because he, he was a good, I mean, me and him, was, we was good friends. We was good friends, you know. We worked on the line together. It was just like me and him. And, um, but, I mean, eventually I got comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I got comfortable and I went over to his house and, you know, we kicked it off real good. You know, nothing bad i mean you know nasty happened i'll just put it out there we didn't do anything you know we were just friends and we laughed and we would talk and you know he would you know share his story about his life and i would share my story about my life and you know we worked afternoon so it would be kind of late and so some nights you know i ended up staying over there some nights i would make me a pallet on the floor and he would lay in his bed i mean that's how cool we were we were just cool like that you know and um but you know, eventually, you know, feelings started to grow, whatever, and um, I went head over heels for him, you know, because he's a very, he was a very sweet and nice guy. It's crazy about it. Prior to me getting pregnant with Queen, it's the story that I wanted to share with you. Um, I was at work, um, and um, I was working on a pouch machine, and in front of me is my machine, and I was packaging parts for Ford, and I, I guess I was stamping the letters on the bag, the pouch, with the pouches, uh, putting the, the numbers in, the part number and the name of the part onto the bag. And then I was the one who put the little small parts in and closed the bag up, you know. 
um, I had uh, like three girls working behind me at their pouch station. Anyhow, to make a long story short, um, I'm working one particular day and uh, all of a sudden, you know, it was like a, on my shoulder, somebody, I mean, I felt it just like this, like my hand hit. And I looked back and nobody was around me. Nobody was around. And I'm like, that couldn't have been nasty because there's no way she's back there. Ain't no way she, she had to have tapped me and, and, I, and I turned right around. She wouldn't already be at her desk working. And this is, this is weird to me. So it was like, okay, well then, you know, maybe somebody in the, in the plant somewhere threw something and hid behind her, but then nothing fall. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, a tap on my shoulder. And um, what was crazy is, you know, I, I said, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, so I went back to work to maybe see if it happened again, but eventually I forgot about it. But anyway, around break time, um, me and him used to always go have our breaks together. And I would uh, go down there where he was, or he would come where I was. But this particular day, um, we didn't go in the cafeteria. He was running a conveyor line, and um, he used to sit on top of the conveyor line after, um, you know, break. It was shut down, of course. And uh, he was just sitting up there. Me and him was just talking, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, he was like, you know, he looked back. And he looked at me. He was like, who touched me? I was like, what do you mean? He was like, somebody just tapped me. I was like, that happened to me. That happened to me down at the pouch machine. You know what I'm saying? Like, who? I said, there's nobody behind you. I'm, I'm looking at you. So there's nobody behind you. So he thought I was joking. I was like, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding you not. I'm not pranking you or nothing like that. Nobody is behind you. I'm looking at you. But this same exact thing happened to me. I didn't think about it, y'all. I didn't think about it no more. And it was like, you know, it's like, it completely like left my mind and I think it left his, but I think prior to that, um, I had a dream. It wasn't, was, wasn't a dream. Um, me and him was, we was talking in the bedroom and this really happened. He was laying in his bed and I was sitting on the floor and, um, I was talking and, um, it was like before we had to go to work and, um, I had laid down on the floor. I don't know. I took me a nap and all I know is, I opened my eyes and I had this baby girl in my hand and I was walking down the stairs with this baby girl just the way his apartment was made and um, I walked to the bottom of the stairs and like my friend was at the bottom of the door and I showed her the baby and I walked it was like oh she's beautiful like that I said thank you and I walked back up the stairs lay back down on the spot I was and when I opened my eyes my arm was in this position like I was still holding her and it was not a dream, it was like a vision, like. And I was like, that's crazy, like, that seems so real because it's like my eyes wasn't even closed, like I never went to sleep. So, but I never tell, I, I never shared to uh, Muhammad about this dream. I kept it to myself, you know. And um, because I thought, well, you know, it's probably just, you know, whatever. But dang, that seemed for real, I said to myself. Well, later on, like two weeks, um, I found out that I was pregnant and um, I kept being sick and I don't know I was just my stomach wasn't feeling right you know I was like okay I'm a, I was a rally food lover back then rallies you know and we would go to rallies for lunch and I just know this particular night my stomach was just like bubbling it just wasn't right you know and then I kept feeling that way and then all of a sudden you know I just kept vomiting I'm on my dry never been pregnant before I don't know the symptoms you know I wasn't even paying attention you know and um, so I was vomiting and um, it kind of scared me because I thought maybe, you know, something wrong with this food. So I went to the doctor, of course, the ER, and found out I was pregnant. I was pregnant. Um, I mean, I said I wasn't gonna bring no kids into this world, okay? And it was like, um, I was so, one side of me was like happy the other side of me was like, what am I going to do? I don't, I don't know how to be no mother. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? None of us know how to be a mother, especially the first time. But you know, it all kick in, you know. So I didn't tell um, Muhammad. I didn't tell him. And um, actually, uh, we had a, a bunch of friends at work. And um, Muhammad had already knew that I was pregnant. He had told them. And um, they come telling me, it was like, did you tell him yet? I was like, no, I ain't saying anything to him. They was like, girl, he already know. I was like, who told him? They was like, no, he already know. Reba, he telling us. He know you pregnant. He know he knows, you know. And so it was kind of weird. But anyway, um, 
in the middle of my 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 um pregnancy before I got even started up into my months or whatever I found out maybe I was like I don't know I think I was maybe about six was six weeks or something like that I wasn't even in, up into the months put it like that maybe I, probably about like two months or something like that when I found out or something like that I'm not sure but all I know all I know is this I I, I didn't I, I had got like they say cold feet when you get married you don't want to get married and you run off I had cold feet when it came to having a baby and so I was afraid you know and um, I remember going to the abortion clinic I was gonna get rid of Queen and um, this is very uncomfortable to tell because people take your past and act like you meant to do that today like yeah that's why she like this no it's not Queen is a mama's girl all day long she a mama's girl and um, but anyway I got scared because you know I'm young you know um, not that I wasn't worried about like taking care of her. I was so much worried about like, am I gonna live? Like, what if I die during pregnancy? I was scared of that stuff like that. Like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go through pain because I had a very low pain tolerance. I still do. You know what I'm saying? I don't like pain. You know, and I was just afraid. You know, afraid of going through. And um, so, um, you know, I tried to have an abortion with Queen, and um, I went to the abortion clinic. And um, that particular day, I could not find my license, y'all. I, I don't know what happened to my driver's license. I'm like, I'm out here driving without a license. Wow. So she was like, ma'am, you're gonna have to have ID, a picture ID or something like that. I was like, I can't find my license. She said, well, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Um, and I was like, well, what about ID? Cause I got, I got ID. She said, if you have any pictures of you, she said, any pictures of you are old IDs, that's fine. I was like, good, bet. You know, I still got my ID when I was like 16 years old. I had that for years. And I had this big old bag, y'all, a clear bag of nothing but pictures of me, my friends, and my family and stuff like that. Because mind you, all my stuff was in my car. I said, you know, I really didn't, I was just, you know, I was by myself, so I was staying here and there, you know, when I was young, you know. And you know, back then it's like, not to get off the subject, but back then it's almost like to get a place right away, you had to have a baby or something to get a uh, general assistant or section eight back then or whatever. You couldn't just be, you know, uh, you had to have a child. To get a place right away, you, you, could, you had a child, you know. But that's not my reason of having her, I'm saying. That's why I didn't have a place, but I, I worked and I stayed with, like, you know, friends. But anyway, so I went out to the car, cause I said my stuff was in my car and um, I went to look for the pictures. I'm like, I got my pictures, I'm, I'm good, you know? So I went and um, looked for the bag. The bag was gone. The bag was gone. I, I had all this stuff in my car. My ID, here I am, 24 years old, 24 years old, and I still got my ID from when I was 16 years old. But the day that I go up here to the abortion clinic to not have my baby, to get rid of my baby, it's gone. So I couldn't find it nowhere, y'all, nowhere. And it was like, um, I had a friend of mine with me and they was like, so what you think, this God or something? And I was like, yes, yeah, God, I believe it's God. If I can't find this ID in this car and I go to this front seat and I look under the floor in the glove compartment, it's not meant for no abortion. This baby not coming out today. I'm having my baby. I went and I looked and I looked high and low and I could not find my pictures. To this day, I don't know, it's like they vanished and disappeared, y'all. They were in my car. I knew where I put them. I did not misplace them. They were in the back of my trunk. Um, my ID, I had my ID on me. It was in the glove compartment. I went through all the bags, all the glove compartments, all the compartments, under the floor, under the... I mean, I could not find it, okay? So, there was no pictures of me whatsoever. So, I got in the car and left that day, and it was like, okay... Well, I, I take that to be a sign from the Lord. I ain't having no abortion, y'all. Because I wasn't always in church and stuff, doing things the right way. I mean, I was raised in church, but ain't nobody perfect. We all out here doing stuff, especially our young people. You know, don't be judging nobody because they sitting up in the church and like, she, in, she a church girl doing that. No, that's where you got most of your problems at, up in the church. You know, ain't nobody innocent, you know. But yeah, I took and went on and you know, I had a baby. I had a baby and um, when I had her, I didn't get my first apartment until I was, until the well, queen was eight months pregnant, eight months old. And I got my, my first, that townhouse to me, you know, my mother was like, oh, you live over here. It's like you living beneath your privileges. You, you, you better than this. You wasn't raised like this and all of this. And it was like, man, this two bedroom townhouse to me, 
is a castle. You know, with me and mine, I ain't gotta worry about nobody telling me to get out no more. I ain't gotta worry about nobody saying, these my rules or, or holding anything over my head. You know, this is my place. I clean my kitchen when I get ready to. Nobody told me nothing, okay, nothing. So it was like, that was the joy of it all. And then enjoying her, you know, enjoying my daughter. And that's when my parenting skills like kicked in, like what I wanted for her and how I was overprotective of her and how it was me and her. I used to hang out with my friends all the time and you know, we would go party and stuff like that. And you know, all that stuff stopped and everybody was like, oh, your life is about to be over. You, you ain't gonna be able to do nothing. You stuck with a baby. And it was like, no, I'm about to prove y'all wrong. I'm about to show y'all that you can have fun with a baby. You know, she ain't gonna stop my life, but me and her, we gonna live, we gonna live this thing together, you know? So all the places that I could not go was scratched out. But the places that I could go, I went every place that I could with my baby. You know what I'm saying? And and it was um, when Bella was popping. Me and my baby and my friends and or cousins and with their babies, we would all baby on up. And we would just go to the park and we would uh, go to carnivals. And I did everything that I could do, was able to do with my baby. And I still had fun. I still enjoyed my life. And I used to just have so much fun dressing her and, you know, just... Me and her, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, I remember times where, you know, when she when she went to preschool, her first day of preschool was like so scary for me because it was like she was not under my protection, I felt, you know, under my care. And I used to always have nightmares that, you know, um, that her people was going to get her, you know what I'm saying? That her dad was coming for her, you know? I always had nightmares and dreams that he was hiding in my closet. And not to say that he's that type of man, but these are the dreams that I used to have because I know what he wanted. I know what he told me, you know what I'm saying? He told me that he wanted Queen to grow up in Yemen and he did not want her here in America. And that, that frightened me. You know, I never argued with him. I just got away from him. I'm like, okay, I agree with you. You're right, it's your child. But after that, he ain't see me no more. So... Um, that's what that, but anyway, to get back to the preschool, her first day in preschool was like, oh my God, you talking about